So let me start this review out with a quick disclaimer. I have never seen Teen Titans Go, at least no full episodes. I've also never seen Teen Titans, the original animated series. I have no nostalgic connection to it. No point of comparison. I know the internet has strong opinions about Teen Titans Go, but I went into the movie totally blind. That being said, this movie was actually a lot of fun. You gonna annoy me to death with your waffles? So the basic plot surrounds the Teen Titans, especially Robin, voiced by Scott Manville, who yearns to be considered a true superhero, not just a sidekick to Batman. In his eyes, there's only one way to be a true superhero, to get a movie made about you. The film follows the team's exploits as they do everything in their power to make their friend's dream come true, and become more legitimate in the eyes of the Justice League and the public. It's a simple plot, easy to explain, and that right there is such a crucial element. It makes the movie feel more concise and focused, and as it takes all its crazy twists and turns, it remains anchored by that one goal. For example, there's a whole segment revolving around time travel. While it ultimately doesn't affect the plot long term, it's at least entertaining and funny. And it occurs because our main characters think it will get them a movie. No matter what crazy shenanigans happen, it stays on track. The characters in the movie are also actually pretty good. The Teen Titans themselves are loud and obnoxious, but they get called out on it. The plot is about them trying to learn to be more serious, and it makes them more bearable. With these kinds of goofy main characters, it's important to have a straight man to play off of. The movie definitely provides that, usually in the form of made superheroes like the Justice League, or our villain Slade, voiced by Will Arnett. The film says that an arch nemesis is the most important part of a superhero movie. Sure enough, without Slade balancing out the Teen Titans' silliness, this whole thing would not have been as strong. As it stands though, the team gets to have their silliness and fun without it becoming overbearing most of the time. Now I did say most of the time. The humor in the movie falls a little too heavily on butt jokes for me, and that fart joke from the trailer... Yeah, that one, it really drags on. However, that is also the weakest joke in the movie. The other weak jokes manage to fly by quickly, and the jokes that do land, oh, they are golden. The Tetronium Crystal, the perfect plot device. I mean, you have a song literally titled Upbeat Inspirational Song About Life in the soundtrack, and I'm a sucker for meta humor like that. It's nice to see that Warner Brothers and DC Comics are able to laugh at themselves. Has there been a movie about you? There was a Green Lantern movie, but we don't, we don't talk about that. Heck, we even get a jab at the infamous Martha scene from Batman vs Superman. Marvel gets a fair bit of ribbing too. For example, Stan Lee makes a cameo until realizing it's a DC movie. Nah, I'm pretty sure you're Deadpool. Look into the camera and say something inappropriate. The beginning parodies both the DC Universe and the Marvel logos. It definitely pokes fun, but at the same time you can also sense a fondness behind it. It's a good natured roasting that any fan of comic book heroes would appreciate. The jokes go beyond superheroes though. There's a whole segment that mirrors the circle of life from The Lion King, and it's just outright ridiculous in the best way possible. You have Back to the Future, of course, with the time travel segment. Where are we gonna find Libyan terrorists to sell us plutonium at this hour? There's even a Harry Potter reference for the eagle-eyed viewer. All these references don't feel overwhelming though. Nothing lingers too long, and the references don't dominate the screen time. As for the animation, you can see that it's generally pretty similar to the show. However, there are parts where the style shifts. For example, in the Lion King parody, the animation becomes more Disney-esque, flowing more smoothly. There's also another part where it's essentially cut-out animation. And while most of it does look like the show, there's also some upscale techniques added in to add extra depth to the picture. I can tell a lot of effort went into the animation here. And honestly, I can say the same for the whole movie. Sure, the butt and fart and poop jokes aren't exactly my cup of tea, but there's enough good material to balance it out. It manages to keep a focused story and pokes fun at superhero movies while still loving them. I have to say, it's pretty good. I enjoyed it and had a good time, which is more than I can say for this upcoming travesty. I was wrong.
Yeah, I'll take these fun guys any day. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out my website for animation news, short stories, and more. I'll see you all next time. The Bean is out.